Hey everybody, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I apologize this is posted late. Um, I did this lecture and when I went to post it, it wouldn't post. Um, there was something flawed with the file, so I had to redo um, this lecture, but I can't really do it during the day very well because my daughters, um, it's a little tricky um, because they they uh, when they see a camera boy they love to engage and try to be part of it and so um, I had to wait till this evening to get this re-recorded so I apologize for the delay um, if you're not able to get to this right away you end up getting to this a little bit later in the week or even the weekend and you need a little more time to finish that assignment just let me know um, this is this is all part of it you know like some things just aren't gonna work out perfectly and some things will um, will, will, will work out just fine. So, uh, I, so chapter 13, I'm going to do a quick uh, overview of um, consumer behavior in sport. It goes really well with chapter 12, the marketing um, chapter, because marketers depend on consumers and they study consumer behaviors and how consumers and what consumers are looking for. So we want to understand what consumer behavior is, and that is that it is made up of the processes involved in the search, selection, purchase, and use of product services and experiences that fulfill consumers' needs or desires. So we're going to be talking a lot about here in this um, with this little lecture, I'm going to be talking about uh, motivation, um, desires, wants, um, just fulfilling needs to a degree. Um, and and so that's what we that's what we think about when we think about consumer behavior is these um, these these kinds of um, needs that a consumer is looking to fulfill. Um, when we talk about where our consumers are, how do we find consumers? We talk about it in a couple of different ways. One is like the market segment. So that a market the market segment is a distinctive portion of the population characteristics um, or behavior that you would identify as one section. So it's a it's a segment, it's a market segment. And when you wanna look at a target market, that is a very specific um, part of a, of a market segment that you're trying to make sure that you get the information to. Um, they're like the focus of what you are trying to attract, like a niche, right? Um, so when, we, when you hear people talking about the market segment, they're talking about a fairly large demographic and when they're saying the target market they're talking about that really you know particular specific part of the market that they want our consumer market that they want to um, try to attract um, you know consumers uh, we, we we think about consumers having needs to fulfill um, a sport organization is going to be very successful when they can identify and figure out what uh, a customer's unfulfilled needs are and satisfy those before their competition does. Um, and they do it better, they do it faster, you know, they do it in a way that makes um, their competition, you know, sort of realize, or sort of makes their competition look flat or look worse, right? Um, because everybody has needs. All consumers have needs. Every person has needs. Every person has physiological basic needs. We need we need air, we need water, we need food to live. If we don't have those things, we could not live. We physical, physiologically could not survive. So we all have physiological needs and then we all have acquired needs. Um, and it's these, it's, it's like these acquired needs that we want to figure out about a, a consumer. Um, Acquired needs are like our desires, our wants. Um, they're not necessary to live, but we sure kind of sometimes feel like we couldn't live without them, right? So, like, I really feel like I'm struggling that there's no March Madness because I feel like I need some March Madness in my life. It's really weird to not have college basketball playoff playoffs right now. It feels like I'm totally missing something. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of um, acquired need that uh, we think about with consumers is like what what is that desire desired thing or their passionate area the areas of passion that they need to have fulfilled and how do we do that better than the competitor how do we do that quicker faster more efficient more attractively than our competitor and so um, marketers want to be thinking about consumers in terms of their acquired needs 
and um, what it would take to fulfill um, said those said needs. And the other thing about acquired needs, of course, is that they're different from everybody. My acquired needs are different than any of yours. We may have similar ones, but probably not but probably not together all the same ones and the same amongst amongst all of you you probably have, may have some similar needs that have been acquired but um, they're definitely different from person to person so they are individualized those acquired needs but um, you know again like marketers can think about how to group and um, find ways to connect um, certain needs acquired needs of consumers um, so the next thing I talk about with consumer behavior is motivation. What motivates um, us to participate in sport? What motivates us to spectate sport? Um, and when it comes to talking about participation, um, they have found that there's more than a hundred motives for people to participate in sport. Um, so just a wide range of things. I'm sure even if you thought for just a minute, like, what, what am I motivated what, what motivated me to participate in sport? You could probably come up with like four or five things off the top of your head. What, you know, what motivates you to participate? And those motivations can basically put in, be put into three categories, um, achievement, social, and, and mastery. And um, with those are sort of, uh, a, a sort of definitions that help identify what the distinction is. When you are thinking about achievement, you are thinking about, you know, the need to compete and to be um, looked at as the best or one of the best. You know, you you value having the notoriety. You want to win um, because you love to be, you love the accolades. You love the, you know, the medals or whatever it is, right? So it's like you get to achieve something and you get recognized for that achievement. There's a sense of extrinsic rewards that help motivate people who are who have achievement motivation. Whereas the opposite of that is mastery motivation, where you are really just mostly concerned about being your best, that you develop the skills, that you have the ability to learn and understand and master the sport, the understanding of the sport um, to your to your favor, to your to the best of your ability. So it isn't just about being the best, but being your best. And that's, and you like the challenge of trying to find that. And that is intrinsic reward. You know, when you, when you accomplish something that you have set out to do, um, that's intrinsic reward and that's intrinsic, intrinsic motivation. So that's the difference between achievement motivation and mastery motivation. And then there's another one that's that, um, another category, which is social motivation. And this is like the desire for interaction, right? Which probably a lot of us were socially motivated when we first started playing sports. We're like, oh, our friends are playing. I want to be with my friends. Or this would be a great way to meet people. If you move to a new place, you're like, oh, I'm going to maybe, you know, try this sport. I want to make sure I keep playing this sport because this is how I'm going to meet people. Some of us carry that into college, right? Like we think, oh, I have an immediate network of people I get to be friends with when I play a sport. Um, uh, or, you know, maybe one of two of your friends quit the team and you're like, I can't keep doing this because my friends mean a lot to me. And, you know, you quit so that you, you could, you maybe were more socially motivated to continue playing that sport. Um, so yeah, so there's kind of those, those are those three sort of broad categories and within them are different, like ideas of, or ways that you're motivated to participate and again, you probably find or can think about how you are, are or were motivated to participate and where you would fall within those three um, various categories. And those are different from like why we spectate sport. Um, while there may be some overlap in terms of the, the vast difference, different way, reasons in which we are motivated to participate, um, spectator motivation is um, has its own specific ways or reasons why people are motivated to watch sport. Um, diversion is one, you know, you just it's nice to get away from everyday life and just watch something um, that like makes us feel good, we feel part of. Um, you like the drama and the excitement, that's another reason. There's a des desire for the drama and the excitement of sport. Um, you like to kind of root bask in that the glory of a team that you follow that wins and sort of boosts your self-esteem to be tied to a successful team, um, which is an interesting study of, of spectators, but true. You know, it's 
it's why people talk about jumping on a bandwagon when a team gets good because it's nice to be attached to some to a team that's successful. Um, you could watch and be a spectator for you stress. You know, you you seek excitement and stimulation. It doesn't stress you out um, that a game might be tight or unknown. Um, it like gets gets you excited. You like that stimulation. You enjoy kind of the uncertainty and the anticipation that sport creates. Um, economic gain, gain is another reason. You know, gambling is very um, big around sports and is becoming bigger and bigger, especially with internet gambling. So if you're making money off of sports, you're certainly um, going to like to watch, but you're also going to watch that you can make good decisions about betting, right? So you have to pay attention, you have to spectate the sp sport. Um, aesthetically, you might like sport. I mean, I personally think basketball is a very beautiful sport. Um, the movement and the athleticism of the athletes, but you know, uh, more often people think of aesthetic sports like figure skating, um, gymnastics, swimming, dance, <clears throat> rhythmic gymnastics, trampoline, etc. Right? Um, and so a lot of people like really just think they love to watch that beautiful movement of, of a body, a human form, and so that's what motivates people to watch. Um, and then a sense of belonging. You know, this is kind of like one of the sociological phenom phenomenons we learned about with sport is that people like that social connectedness. Um, you like to be a part of a, a group, uh, to affiliate with a group and have that experience with a group. And so that could be a reason that you're motivated to um, watch sport as well. So one of the questions um, on your assignment that you'll finish is is on this slide, and it asks, what motivates you to be a sports spectator? Why do you like watching sport? Is it the reasons, you know, from the reasons on this screen, what would you say? Or is there something that lies outside of these particular um, uh, descriptions? Um, so anyway, so then we're going to think about consumer perceptions. Um, you know, consumers recognize opportunities to watch or participate in sport to fulfill their needs. And consumers think a lot about the perception um, of what's going to be happening or what's going on or teams that are involved in an event. Um, and our perception is like how we select what we engage with, right? How we select, organize, and interpret the stimuli that creates a picture of the world and so um we we think about like um really liking certain teams because they are successful and we want to be attached to them right we think about liking um certain events because they um are popular you know we we do create a perception about we do have we do have perceptions about things and we get attached to those um, we also, as consumers, have very selective attention because we, we do, especially in sport, we pay attention to the things that work for us and that matter to us, that's relevant to our needs as a consumer um, and relative to our like attitudes and experiences. And we are willing to overlook the bad things. Um, you know, I, I was um, talking to someone the other day about Rick Pitino getting a new, a, new, a new head coaching job at Siena, which is, you know, like a mid-major school. And um, I just thought to myself, you know, that that's a unfortunate. You know, someone like Rick Pitino doesn't really deserve to be coaching anymore. He has been completely um, corrupt and unethical in the way that he works and operates and recruits young men to come play in his programs and treats his coaching staff and treats women around him. And it's just really unfortunate um, and it's amazing to think that there are many people who will be happy to see him coaching on the sideline again because he's such a great coach. Or even the fact that, you know, the athletic director and the president of the university that hired him are willing to overlook all those things because he's such a great coach. You know, they're, they're thinking they got a great deal and a legendary coach to coach at this little school, you know, this little bit lesser known school. But the fact of the matter is, is that they, they picked up someone who is highly immoral. And, and in terms of his behavior. And so um, we have selective attention about things. We, we figure out what we value and what we want most out of something, and we're willing to be selectively attentive to what makes sense and what fits that idea and what doesn't necessarily fit we leave, we leave behind. Um, and that happens a lot in sport, a lot, a lot in sport. You know, we have um, all kinds of examples of that, but that one, because it literally just had a conversation with someone about it, is one that's really fresh in my mind. Um, 
So uh, speaking of you know consumer consumers and thinking about their selective attention, we also want to be thinking about how consumers um, develop attitudes around products to either consume them or disregard them. And typically it comes from um, um, thinking about our attitudes towards things and our involvement towards sports things, you know. Um, and our attitude is an expression of our inner feelings. And they typically, when we, when we talk about like our attitude towards something, it usually means we are we usually talking about whether we like or dislike something. And we make those determinations based on either like a behavioral or an affective or a cognitive decision. Um, it's like, you know, behavioral, it's our experiences, or if it's affective, it's our feelings. If it's cognitive, it's our beliefs. And so we, we, we decide if we like or dislike something based on these kind of three things. We've either had a good experience or bad experience with it. Um, we really have a strong feeling, good or bad, with something, and then we have a, or, or we have a certain belief about something, um, and that makes us have an attitude of whether we want to like something or dislike something, we want to consume it or disregard it, um, and that's that's a, a big part of how we think about things as a consumer is our attitude, how we like or dislike it based on something we've experienced or felt or believed um, or do believe. Um, and then we can also be thinking about in terms of our consumer attitude is like our involvement. Um, that that has to do with like an, in, the interest we have and then also um, the level at which we think it's an important part of our life. Like if we think we actually like identify with it. Um, so with that, I, I have a couple of slides that um, look at like how we think about liking or disliking something or attitude towards it. And this slide is a slide that is actually going to um, become a survey on the Moodle page, on our class Moodle page that you'll have to fill out by Sunday. Um, and basically it's going to ask you like on a scale of one to five, would you, do you like this, if, do you like this sporting um, event or do you not like it? Do you dislike it? Or are you kind of neutral and in between? Um, and really it is, it's, it's, a. Uh, it's interesting to look at and to see like what um, people's attitudes are towards certain sporting events. Um, you know, a lot of times, and it's pretty consistent that I have a class full of people who really like the Super Bowl. Um, but of course, our class is full of people who are interested in sport. But when you ask people who are a mixed group of people, you won't always get such a high um, response that people like the Super Bowl. You have some people, like legitimately, there are people out there who don't like the Super Bowl. They have a dislike towards it. Um, so anyway, so those 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 things that are listed on um, slide eight, Super Bowl, Stanley Cup, um, World Poker Tour, Laundry Football League, you're going to get a chance to um, tell us if you like or dislike it, and we'll see kind of where the class lies in terms of, their, of your consumer attitude towards these sporting events. Um, and then in your assignment for the week, I, I've asked you, like, how do you identify yourself in relation to sports? Because that's another part of consumer behavior is thinking about your involvement, how, how, what you're interested in, um, with sport, how is that, uh, and, and the degree to which you sort of consider it important to you, um, how does that create your identity around what, um, sp around sport, right? So like I would say in my identity, and I put this on the slide that I am a WNBA Lynx fan and I am a basketball player. And I would say those things are true about my identity. Like those are, that's real. Um, even though I don't play basketball, obviously today, like I used to, I mean, every once in a while, I can't help but get out and get shots up or, you know, when I'm feeling really good about things, I might get out and play noon ball, you know? So <clears throat> like, even though I don't play consistently anymore, I still think of myself as a basketball player. Like, it is just in me. Um, and so that would be a way that I identify myself. And so I want to hear about how you, you too, how you identify yourself um, when it comes to sports. So um, so that's kind of a little bit about consumer, consumer behavior, consumerism, consumer motivations um, around spectating and participating in sport. And, um, and again, is a nice connection with marketing because marketers think about how consumers be behave and believe what their attitudes are, etc. Um, so your assignment for this week, chapter 12 and 13, 
it is posted on Moodle if you haven't seen it yet, but um, you do have to do something with marketing, with a marketing campaign, um, a recent marketing campaign within the last two years. You have to look at that campaign and, and talk about like why is it, why was it successful? Why, why were, you, were you drawn to it? And you need to look at the marketing mix um, with that campaign and talk about that. And then, um, and then for chapter 13, you just need to answer the questions, the couple questions that are within this PowerPoint, and then do the reflections at the end, the last three slides of this PowerPoint. There, um, there's a couple of, or I'm sorry, there are situations or scenarios kind of stated for you. And I have you thinking about them from a consumer perspective and to reflect on those. So you'll do those as well, and those will all be submitted on Moodle. In addition to that, though, there's going to be that survey that will be posted, um, and I'll post it tomorrow, and you'll be able to um, answer that anytime you want between um, the time it's posted and Sunday. And then there is a Moodle quiz um, Friday, and it is on chapters 4 and 5 and 12 and 13. I'm sorry about 4 and 5 because it's been such a, a little while since... Um, you you looked at that material, but it will be good for you to go back and review it. Um, but it'll be just a five point quiz, and I'll post it sometime on Friday. But you'll have all day Saturday and Sunday um, to do that quiz, just a five point quiz. So if you feel like that's going to be difficult for you to achieve to take it over the weekend, just let me know. But I'm kind of assuming since people are pretty put, like we're pretty kind of set, and we're kind of just put where we are right now. Um, I'm hoping the weekend won't be much of a problem, but I, if it is a problem, I'll, you know, for a lot of people, just the weekend in general with maybe internet access or whatever, um, I can change to putting that Moodle quiz up like on Thursdays, Thursday and Fridays or something. But I want to give you a couple days to get it done. So again, to just kind of accommodate for people and when they can get online and get, get to, um, taking the quiz. So so the survey, the re responses to the PowerPoint for Chapter 13, the, the marketing um, the marketing campaign, um, identifying that that is due, and then the Moodle quiz. Those are the things you have left to do for the week. And then, um, yeah, and then you'll have gotten through kind of your first week online with your intro to sport management class. Um, shoot me, shoot me an email if you have any questions or drop me a line, whatever. I'm here to help you. Um, I, I have found that it's been very overwhelming with emails these this past week, and also because advising has started as well. So I apologize if I'm taking a little longer to get back to you because I'm trying to get through everything, but there's a lot. There's a lot like pinging back and forth between classes, um, going live now and. Um, all the all the things that are constantly changing from our end as administration and then obviously with, a, with advising. So forgive me if it takes me a minute, but definitely hang tight. Um, I'm, again, I'm always willing to work with you if you need like a little extension because I don't get back to you quickly enough. That's fine. We'll work it out. Um, just want to help you be successful here. So um, have a good rest of the week working on your stuff. Let me know if you need any help. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.